All right, welcome back. We are under project five. I don't know. I don't know either. It's either that. We're doing the floor. We're starting the floor. We've obviously finished the kill mat. Now it's time to start installing the floor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a floor out of one by one aluminum, an aluminum uh, backed poly ISO, two by six that we are going to plane down to one inch in treated wood for an extra base that we can screw into to mount the cabinets. To decide where we're gonna put then the shower pan, we want this as far back as we can get it, but this is not, this is the most rearward portion, but it is not perfectly level going up. So if you put it all the way back here, you would end up then the shower curtain would end up hitting then too high. So to figure that out then, use the smart level because the vans are not perfectly level. So just taking a level and dropping it down will not work because you would end up then being off. You put the smart level on the floor of the van, zero it, and then you can use that at your rearward most point and then use that to go down to mark then where that point is on the floor. So I've marked that along the floor here. This gives me my zero point where I wanna set the shower pan so it's back as far as it can go. So when the shower door is there, it matches, it won't interfere with the line that goes across here. Now we're marking out where we're gonna put the aluminum floor joists. We're using these because we don't wanna put the the foam, the poly ISO, right on the floor. It's soft enough, I mean, it has some structure to it, but over time, I think you would end up crushing that. So you need something to hold it up that the floor can rest on that won't crush then the insulation. I like the one by aluminum. It is lightweight, easy to work with. We have quite a bit of it because we use it for all kinds of projects. And that's what we're gonna then use that. We've marked out where it's gonna go on the floor and we're gonna start then cutting and gluing these down to the floor. So earlier I came in and stuffed these up where the aluminum is, aluminum, aluminum is going to sit so the glue would better adhere instead of to the glossy. Okay, we've got the one inch square aluminum tubes glued down. This is what is gonna make up the floor joists. Now I'm gonna also do a few of these out of some one by six that I'm gonna plane down to one inch. And that's so I have a little better area to grab a hold of, screwing through to mount cabinets and things that we're gonna to try to mount to the floor also. So I'm gonna put that part in next. Here's the layout of the lumber or the wood part of this. You can see we have sections here where we're gonna have the mounting points. Cabinets over here, little cabinet here, L couch there. That way we have something more than just the aluminum. So we're going to screw through three quarter inches of OSB into then either the aluminum or one inch worth of wood. The wood will give me a more secure long-term connection than through the eighth inch aluminum.
we let it dry. Continuing on with the floor project now, we've got all of the one by aluminum bonded to the floor. We used 3M 5200 to do that. Also then we plane down two by six uh, treated lumber that we're gonna use then underneath the cabinets and the mounting points for the extruded aluminum. That way we get a better mount than into the uh, square tube aluminum by itself. Now I'm actually adding then the foam insulation, which is polyiso. It's one inch polyiso. It's uh, uh, aluminum faced on one side, uh, paper backing then on the other. I like the polyiso just because it's easy to work with. It's water resistant. And also the aluminum backing gives a, another barrier uh, to heat transfer just with the aluminized side on it. It cuts very simply just with an exacto knife or a straight razor, measuring out the pieces, cut them, drop them in place. This is the one inch poly iso. It's a foil face poly iso, fairly easy to cut. Straight edge, along with a good knife. Let's go in the back of the van. You can see what we've started. This is how it goes in. Fairly straightforward. You can see then the one by aluminum tube and then the plain down treated lumber that's again going to be the base for our cabinets you could screw through right into the one by aluminum I just think this gives me a little better mounting a little better bite than it would be just into the aluminum if we were screwing straight into the aluminum here's the finished product then the channel that's left out there is actually an open channel I'm going to use to run plumbing and electrical across the floor instead of up through the wall and through the ceiling. And I'm going to put a false panel on top of there so that way I can get to it anytime I need to. We still have to finish the sides here for each side of the shower pan. We're still working on the idea on how to make that work out. Here we go. Now we have a nice template for the wheel well and the mechanism for the slider. We can transfer this now to the OSB, lay that out. I'm going to transfer then onto the OSB from the bottom the cutout for the step to get in. When I made the template, I lined this edge up along the back edge of where this OSB is going to start. That way I can orient this correctly. Now I can transfer then this template to this edge and we should be able to lay it in place. One of the things that is gonna be a little bit of a complication in the wheel well, especially in the front, is not perfectly level. So I tried to cut it out deep enough. That way we'll make the bend or we'll, make, we'll clear the bottom edge of the wheel well. For the OSB, we're using Drymax OSB. It's three quarter inch OSB. I like the Drymax here, number one, because it, it's water resistant. It is only water resistant for a certain amount of time. It's, it's not water resistant like it's treated plywood. It is just water resistant for, it actually has a guarantee of no swelling for 500 days. So you basically almost get a couple years out of this in the weather before it will swell meaning inside the van where there probably some water, it will give us the best chance of not swelling and warping over time. Also, because it is a high quality OSB, it is very smooth. This is sanded down smooth enough, we'll be able to lay the floor right on top of this.
we've now taken spray foam insulation and put a few holes in the one by aluminum and sprayed that in there to get some extra insulation in those tubes instead of being open now they're full of insulation which will again help us give us some more insulation for the floor now we have the subfloor ready to put the main floor on top of it we put a little sound deadening here what this really is it's an underlayment for hardwood floors i want it for a couple reasons number one it does add a little insulation and a little sound deadening but also these pieces here so with metal on metal you will get some thermal conduction through those so you'll get actually heat or cold coming through that inside with this it provides a thermal break now so that thermal conduction won't happen into the floor itself but it's taped into place and ready to put the floor down so I don't bust through the the uh, so Here's where the shower is going to go. We actually will have a cabinet that will cover part of this. This part will be the toilet and will slide out over the opening. And that's how we'll end up then accessing the toilet. But the we need to put in the subfloor here, which is one winch square tube aluminum, and then cut down some treated two by four to make it level. This is all gonna get bonded with the 3 and 5200 to the floor and then leave the little opening here so we can get the spare tire out we plan on leaving the spare tire underneath if we need it for space for a tank something like that we might take it out but right now we plan on leaving it in so i need to be able to access that to drop the spare tire and then the same thing over here i'm using then some one inch aluminum some cut down treated two by four I'm going to bond all that in place now. This is the, the 3M5200. It's the Fast Cure adhesive that we use. We don't end up using a full tube at one time. And to try to preserve this, the first time I use it, I try to use the nozzle. But then this is full, the nozzle's no good anymore. You can wash it out probably with soap or water or whatever and get that to clear out, but it seems to never work as well as I'd like. So what I end up doing then is I take some pretty good plastic and I cover this end, seal that back in there then with the nozzle. Stick that in a gallon baggie and take all the air out of it and seal it back up like so and then it stays good whether all this is necessary to keep it to stay sealed i don't know but that's how i do that then i can take this back out and use it again Now these are weighted down, we just wait for them to dry. Give them 24 hours with the Fast Cure to be dry, 
and then I'll make the floor itself. I'll actually put the insulation in first and then make the floor pieces to go on top. I'm working on the shower pan and to make this work out in the van I had to put a low profile drain on it. I'll show you inside why. But to make this fit, the floor pan has to be modified. Styrofoam cut out here a little bit. This opening through there has to be made a little bit wider. And then this gets bolted on. What I'm also going to do then is to fill this gap here. You can see there's some size difference there. I won't have that hole. I'm not going to cut out the entire floor on that. So I'm just going to raise this up. I'm going to use the poly iso with the aluminum foil on it to raise this up. And then I'm going to build then here, here then, I'm going to build in some one by for it to stand up on so this can stand in on its own. It'll give us an extra step over to get into it, but to get this drain to go where we needed it to, to get out the floor, it's a worthwhile exchange. So you can see here from the top, this is just a cover. This opening has to be made to be just a little bit bigger than that, just on the outside of the where the screws go in. This isn't sealed in yet here. We'll seal it so that way it's nice and uh, watertight. There's actually a rubber gasket on the outside here that should make it watertight, even without sealing this, but I don't want any water to sit in there to grow mildew or mold, so forth. We're going to then seal that off. I'm going to take it back apart, and then I'll seal that back in there. Inside the van here, with the rear shower, one of the problems we found is with the drain being here, it would have went out through right here. Unfortunately, this is exactly where one of the mounts is for the, well, the frame goes under here, but then one of the mounts that sticks out where the spring attaches to is right here. There's just no real way to get that through that and not compromise things outside. That's why this low profile drain, you can see, put this into place here. So you can see with that low profile drain, it actually moves it over right in this area here. And you can see this is actually a plug that goes into the floor and there's a good nice opening right here. The frame is back here and across here. This opening comes out in front of all that. So it'll be on the outside of the frame, inside the wheel well, it'll actually travel forward nicely to where the gray tank is gonna be. So going through this spot works out very well. This will just have then an elbow on it and it'll just exit straight out in that area. It should work out just fine. All right, I'm working on the floor still. I'm mounting it, the floor here to the subfloor and we have both one inch square aluminum and two by six uh, two by six is ripped down to one or plane down sorry the two by six is plane down to one inch so where the wood is we will use a treated wood screw or outdoor screw for decking and then a stainless self-tapping screw where it goes into the aluminum. For the aluminum we'll pre-drill a hole and then put that in.